Guys, the number one investment for new beginning investors is an investment into the S&P 500. Now, in this quick video, I'm going to explain to you exactly what is the S&P 500. And I'm going to give you six reasons why you should be investing in the S&P 500. But I'm also going to talk about a few reasons why you may not want to invest in the S&P 500. Because I believe, guys, that it's important for you as a new beginning investor to understand that there's pros and cons to every single investment that you make. So you got to know the potential risk of investing in the S&P 500 as well. So let's jump right into it. The S&P 500 is a group of individual stocks from more than 500 or more of the biggest companies in America. And by investing in just one S&P 500 index fund or ETF, you'll own a stake in hundreds and hundreds of different stocks all in this bucket called the S&P 500 index fund or the S&P 500 ETF. And again, when I say index, I just mean a grouping. That's what the S&P 500 is. It's a grouping of the largest all in one index fund or ETF. And when I say the largest companies or the biggest companies in America, I'm talking about by market capitalization or what you commonly may hear referred to as market cap. And a market cap is just a measure of a company's size or said in a different way, market cap is the total value of a company's outstanding shares of stock. So when you hear small cap, mid cap, large cap, that's just talking about the size of the company. Small cap is small companies. Mid cap is middle companies and large cap is large companies. Now, an S&P 500 index fund or an S&P 500 ETF will track the performance of the S&P 500, which means if the S&P 500 does well, your index fund or ETF does well. If the S&P 500 does poorly, then your index fund, S&P 500 index fund or ETF will perform poorly. Now, you can always invest in all of the top 500 companies in single stocks if you want to. Or you can just simply invest in one S&P 500 index fund or S&P 500 ETF without having all of these individual separate stocks. Now, it's important to know that when you buy these 500 companies that make up the S&P 500 in a bucket called an index fund or ETF, you got to understand that these companies are weighted in the bucket meaning the companies with the largest market capitalization hold the largest weight. They're the heaviest in the bucket. Now, let me show you guys something real quick. Now, I'm going to show you guys this chart here from uh, finhackers.cz, and it shows the top 20 S&P 500 companies by market cap in 2005. I'm going to go back nearly 20 years ago and show you something that's pretty important here. I'm going to show you this, and this is going to illustrate and lead into the first reason why you want to buy an S&P 500 index fund or ETF as opposed to just buying individual stocks. Now, when you look at the top 20 companies that were by market cap in 2005, you see at the top, you see ExxonMobil, General Electric, Microsoft, Citigroup, Walmart, Bank of America, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, and IBM. And of course, Intel, that's the top 10, right? You have the rest of them. But I really want to focus on the top 10 for the most part, right? When you look at those company guys, and by the way, these are color coded for the different sectors. So the dark gray is for, uh, tech, uh, I'm sorry, the dark gray is for energy. The light gray is for, for financial. The pink is for healthcare. And so this is 2005, okay, 2005. So just notice the companies you have there, right? Those top 10 companies. Now, let me switch over to 2024. This is January 1st, 2024. And you notice Apple is up there, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon. This is 20, almost 25 years later. NVIDIA, Meta, or Meta owns Facebook. Tesla, they own Facebook and Instagram. Tesla, Berkshire Hathaway. Eli Lilly and Visa, those are your top 10 today in 2024 by market cap, right? The top 10 companies are right there. The ones in green are going to be your technology. So you notice something right away that green is pretty, pretty high up there, right? The, the S&P 500 is pretty top heavy with technology companies. Of course, the light blue and the dark green, the light blue is communication and dark blue is... Um, what is dark blue? Dark blue looks like it's hard to tell. Consumer cyclical. So 
Technology is high on the list for the top 10 companies. It's pretty heavily weighted towards IT right now in 2024, right? So most of the companies in the top 20 in general fall into three main categories. IT, which makes up almost 29% of the top 10, top 20 companies, right? And then you have uh, financial companies. They make up about 13%. And then healthcare makes up about 13% as well of the top 20 companies. These three sectors, IT, financial, and healthcare, account for nearly half of today's uh, top 20 companies in the S&P 500. But I want to go back to 2005 because I want you to notice something else about the difference between 2005 and 2024. When you look at the list right here in 2005 of the top 20 companies, let's again, let's focus on the top 10. What do you notice? Exxon Mobil, General Electric, Microsoft, Citigroup, Walmart, Bank of America, Pfizer, Johnson Johnson. If you go back to 2024 today, the biggest thing that you can notice is that the companies that were in the top 10, really the top 20, but primarily the top 10, 20 some odd years ago, they're not in the top 10 today. And I suspect, guys, that the companies that are in the top 10 today, right, Tesla, Meta, NVIDIA, I suspect in the next 20 years, they won't be in the top 10 in 20 years. The only company that's in the top 10 today that was in the top 10 in 2005 is Microsoft, right? I think it's just Microsoft. Yeah, just Microsoft is in the top 10 today, 2024, that wasn't in the that was in the top 10 in 2005. So this brings me to my very first of the six reasons why as a beginner investor you want to invest in the S&P 500 index fund or ETF as opposed to just the individual stocks. Guys, if you get value from this video, please smash the like button below. And please consider subscribing to this channel if you're not already a subscriber. And also don't forget to share this video with your friends and your family. So the very first reason that you wanna invest in the S&P 500 in terms of an index fund or ETF is because of passive investing. The S&P 500 is a prime example of passive investing where investors just simply aim to match the performance of a specific index rather than trying to beat the market with individual stocks, right? When you invest in an index fund, S&P 500 index fund or ETF, it's almost no effort on your part. And research has shown that passive investing like this, typically in index funds and ETFs, it beats more aggressive active investing right? Over the long term, because when you invest passively in an S&P 500 ETF or index fund, you don't have to be involved with the day-to-day -day picking stocks, right? Stock picking is a very, very difficult thing to do, right? Where you do all the research and you're looking at each individual company's 10Q and 10K and profit loss statements and earnings reports. That's pretty difficult. And so by passively investing in the S&P 500 index fund or ETF, you simply kick back Put your investment in there and you don't have to do any of that extra research. Think about it, guys. If you were to invest in the individual stocks of the top 10 companies, you don't know which one of those top 10 companies are going to be in the top 10 in 15 years, 10 years, 20 years. You don't really know that. And so you'd have to figure out when to time it, get in and get out of each of those top 10 stocks that you invested in, if you invested in them individually. So how would you know? when to get in and when to get out. You're playing a guessing game when you're investing in individual stocks. It's a guessing game. Of course, a lot of research involved, a lot of time involved too. And the key is this, nine times out of 10, you won't know what is the optimal time to sell off that stock as it leaves the top 10 largest companies in America. You won't know when to do that if you're actively investing. And that's the first reason it's better to invest in the S&P 500 through index funds or ETFs. Rather than trying to pick and pull and make a decision, not make a decision, make a mistake, make a bad mistake, make a okay, you don't just don't know. You'd be guessing when to trade, when to sell, when to buy. You don't have to do that when you invest in an S&P 500 index fund or ETF. Now that brings me to the second reason why as a beginner investor, you want to be investing in the S&P 500 through an index fund or through an ETF. 
and that is diversification. The S&P 500 is composed, again, of the 500 or more largest companies in the U.S., and it's across various sectors. Although IT is pretty strong right now in terms of the largest companies, as well as healthcare and the financials, right? But for the most part, you're spreading that around through various sectors. And so by investing in an S&P 500 index fund or ETF, you're gaining exposure to a broad array of different industries, which helps mitigate and spread out your risk, which is much better for a beginner investor than taking the risk of investing in individual stocks. Now, the third reason why you want to be in an S&P 500 in index fund or ETF is for the consistent long-term performance. Look, over the long term, the S&P 500 has historically delivered strong returns. While we know there can be periods of you know, volatility and downward spikes here and there in the short term, for the long term, the S&P 500 index fund or ETF, it's going up. It's on an upward trajectory over the long term, right? If you believe in the growth of American companies over the next 20, 30 years, why not invest in 500 of the largest companies in America and hold it for the long term? Now, remember, there's no guarantees when it comes to investing, but the S&P 500 index fund or S&P 500 ETFs, that's about as close as you can get for positive long-term gains than anywhere else you can imagine in terms of investing in the stock market. There was a study done at Crestmont Research that examined the S&P 500's rolling 20-year total returns. And what they found out over there is this. In every single year that they examined, they found that the S&P 500 saw gains and you know positive total returns for every 20-year span. In other words, if you had invested in the S&P 500 index fund or ETF at any point in the history of the U.S. stock market and simply held it for 20 years, at any point, you would have made money. Now, that doesn't guarantee future returns. I get it. But it's to say this, the odds are far and away in your favor for consistent long-term growth if you invest in the S&P 500 index fund or ETF. Now, the fourth reason you want to invest in the S&P 500 index fund or ETF is low cost. Investing in the S&P 500 can, relatively speaking, be very, very inexpensive compared to actively managed mutual funds or compared to investing in individual stocks. Look, there's many brokerage firms out there, Vanguard, Fidelity, Charles Schwab, you name it. They all offer low-cost index funds and ETFs that track the performance of the S&P 500, which makes this low-cost investing accessible to anybody who wants to invest in the top 500 companies in the U.S. Now, number five is this, the benchmark for performance for an S&P 500 index fund or ETF. Lots and lots and lots of investors. It's kind of the, the standard to use the S&P 500 as a benchmark to sort of measure the performance of investment portfolios in general. Now, while we know the S&P 500 is at this point tech heavy, right? IT, again, makes up almost 29 or 30 percent of the S&P 500 in terms of weight right now. The S&P 500 is still a very solid measure or a snippet of the overall stock market. And so by investing in the S&P 500 through an index fund or ETF, you're essentially investing in the broader U.S. economy because the S&P 500 is a gauge of the overall health of the overall U.S. economy. So this broader perspective, just by investing in one S&P 500 index fund or ETF, it's huge. And it's a good way to learn as a beginner investor. Now, number six is this. Global exposure. When you're invested in the S&P 500, many, many, many of those companies have significant global operations. Therefore, by investing in the S&P 500 through an index fund or ETF, you're sort of indirectly getting exposure to the broader economies of the world. You look at Apple, you look at NVIDIA, right? These companies operate on a worldwide scale. So to some extent, you're actually investing in worldwide companies when you invest in the largest companies in America. Now, let me stop right there and bookmark that spot because I want to share some of the cons or some of the problems with investing in the S&P 500. Because again, it's important to give you the full spectrum. Yeah, there's some good, but there's some bad also. And I want to make sure you're aware 
of some of the potential pitfalls or problems with investing in the S&P 500 in an index fund or ETF. Now, the first problem is this. You have to understand and know that the S&P 500 is dominated by large cap companies. Just by default, since the S&P 500 is of the 500 largest companies in the U.S., it doesn't take in consideration the mid cap and the small cap, the smaller companies, right? Because there could be growth there that you want to participate in. If you only have an S&P 500 index fund or ETF, you're only getting the largest companies and you don't get exposure to the small and mid caps. Another problem is that there could be some short term volatility in the S&P 500 index fund or ETF, right? We know that the S&P 500 grows significantly, typically over a longer stretch of time. But what about the short term, right? In the short term, it could go up, go down, go up, go down, go up, go down. And so you see some short term volatility in the S&P 500 because it's just tracking for the most part, the entire stock market. So you have to be able to stomach some of the short term losses that may be happening in the S&P 500 as well, right? We may have a bear market. Can you stomach a bear market in the short term? Now, another problem is, although, as I said before, that a good thing is that these top 500 companies are typically worldwide companies, most of them are obviously based in the U.S. And so you are sort of limited to your global exposure to other companies that are outside of the U.S., right? This may be less of a concern for new investors, but it's something for you to understand and know that you're not getting exposure to some of the large companies in other parts of the world when you invest in the S&P 500 index fund or ETF. And of course, there's no customization, right? There's no customization. You can't mix and pull and pick and pull the types of companies that you want to have in the bucket called the S&P 500 index fund or ETF. Those companies are decided for you. You can't go out and make a decision, oh, I don't want that company, but I want to put this company in the bucket. You can't do that. There's no customization. You're just getting the top 500 companies, period, right? And so for those of you that are new investors that want to have more of a hands-on approach, index funds and ETFs may not be your best option because the stocks that are in the bucket are automatically chosen for you already. There are certain companies that you may not want to own in the bucket called the S&P 500 index fund or ETF. You can't get them out of the bucket. And probably the biggest problem with the S&P 500 index fund or ETF is the simple fact that you can't beat the market with the S&P 500. It's not designed to give you above average returns on your investment. It can only earn average returns for the top 500 companies in America, right? The S&P 500 is designed to mirror the market not to beat the market. And so for many people, guys, many beginner investors, the lower returns you may see with an S&P 500 is well worth the trade-off of the ease of investing into the S&P 500 as an index fund or ETF. It's very simple. And for a lot of new investors, it's that simplicity that's the draw, as opposed to all of the customization and things that you can't get when you have an S&P 500 ETF or index fund. So that's some of the pros and some of the cons, right? Some of the things that are good and some of the things that you got to think about that aren't so good. Now, throughout the video, you may be wondering, well, why am I saying index fund or ETF? It's because they're essentially both the same thing or they're very, very similar. An S&P 500 index fund and an S&P 500 ETF is still both a bucket of stocks of the top 500 companies in America. One of the differences between index funds and ETFs is that ETFs sometimes have a lower barrier of entry. There's some index funds that you have to pay a minimum to invest in that index fund. Where with ETFs, typically there are no minimums, no matter what platform you're buying your ETF on, whether it's Vanguard, Charles Schwab, Fidelity. Typically with an ETF, there are no minimums. The index fund can be bought and sold at one set price at the end of each trading day, while ETFs or exchange traded funds can be bought and traded throughout the day. And so the price for an ETF fluctuates throughout the day. And so you can buy ETFs and trade ETFs just like you can with a regular individual stock. And you can't do that 
with an index fund. So that's the main difference, but that's why I kind of interchange those. If you buy an S&P 500 index fund, it's just the same, very similar as buying an S&P 500 ETF. But that's just a few differences between index funds and ETFs. Now, how to buy an S&P 500 index fund or ETF? You simply open up an investment account at one of the places I mentioned. Could be JP Morgan, could be Vanguard, could be Charles Schwab, as I said before, could be Fidelity. Any of those platforms, whichever one you feel more comfortable with, open up an investment account on that platform. You just sign up and get you a traditional brokerage account at one of those places or through you know, some type of robo-advisor, Stash, Robinhood, you name it. And there you'll find different types of S&P 500 index funds and S&P 500 ETFs. Then after you open up that account, you just simply connect it to your bank and then you add funds. And when you add the funds, those are the funds that you're going to use to ultimately, when they get in your brokerage account, you're going to use those funds to go purchase what you want to purchase in terms of an S&P 500 index fund or ETF. Now, when looking at the different S&P 500 index funds and S&P 500 ETFs, here's a few things to consider and think about. First, tracking errors. Remember, S&P 500 index funds and S&P 500 ETFs, they simply want to track and mirror the performance of the top 500 companies in America. So sometimes there's tracking errors that you want to understand and learn about. And also you want to look at expense ratios. How much does it cost to actually own the fund? Just keep this in mind about expense ratios. The lower, the better. The lower, the cheaper and less expensive it is for fees. And fees matter. Because the more you pay in fees, the less money you have invested. And that can really add up over time. But again, the lower the fees, the lower the expenses, the better. And then, of course, you want to check out the market price, obviously. What is the actual price of the S&P 500 index fund or ETF that you're considering purchasing? Each one of those shares costs something. What is that cost on the platform that you choose? And then finally, you want to look at the past performance of the S&P 500 index fund or ETF, right? The last five years, the last 10 years, the last 20 years. Remember, as a beginner, this is a long-term play when it comes to investing. Now, I've gone over a lot in this video. Let me just sort of summarize a few key things. First, as an investor, always consider your investing objectives right? What are you trying to accomplish with your investing? And then you also want to consider your risk tolerance. Do you want to risk a lot? Do you want to risk a little? Do you want to do more active investing? Do you want to do more hands-off passive investing? And of course, your time horizon. What is your age, right? Oftentimes, if you're 60 years old, you might want to be less aggressive. If you're 30 years old, you might want to be a little more aggressive, right? So your time horizon, your age, those things are going to matter as well. Now, in my opinion, guys, investing in an S&P 500 index fund or ETF, the pros far outweigh the disadvantages. There's a surprising amount of resilience to the American economy and to the top 500 American businesses, right? When held over a long time period, the S&P 500 can be a real strong core holding, mainly for new investors who are looking to build wealth. Look, through inflation, through recessions, through all of the overseas tensions and wars and conflicts and stock market turbulence, up, down, up, down, through all of that, major companies that are in the S&P 500, index fund or ETF, they have proven themselves to be strong and resilient and have good earnings over long stretches of time too along with strong balance sheets, strong profit and earning statements, and they've just been stable, even with their dividends, right? And listen, everyone doesn't have the time and energy to invest in individual stocks of the top 500 companies, right? So why not have you a bucket of stocks called an S&P 500 index fund or ETF and just make it simple for simple investing? Hey, if you got any value out of this video, do me a favor, share the link to this video with your friends, your family, your network of good people. Also, don't forget to smash the like button below and drop me a comment. Let me know, are you invested in the S&P 500 index fund or ETF? If not, why not? And if you are, let me know how you like it in the comment section below. Hey, the best person who's going to take care of the old you is the young you. Guys, do me a favor, take good care of yourself and take care of other people. Until the next video, peace.